Hi, and welcome to our YouTube live series on SAP Business Technology Platform. Today, our focus is on SAP Process Automation, and I'm joined here with Angela Harvey. During this session, you'll see a live product demo and learn how you can get started with BTP and SAP Process Automation right now for free. SAP BTP allows you to accelerate cross-functional innovation and unlock your business potential. The platform brings together data and analytics, artificial intelligence, application development, process automation, and integration into one unified environment. BTP is the foundation upon which enterprise applications are built, including enterprise resource planning, customer relationship management, and supply chain management apps. And BTP makes these apps work well together. With that, allow me to introduce Angela from the SAP Process Automation team. Awesome, thank you so much, Ali, and thanks everyone for joining. My name is Angela Harvey, and I work in marketing and solution management for process automation. So really excited to share this service with you today. For anyone that's been around SAP for a while, you might be familiar with intelligent robotic process automation or workflow management. This is actually the successor to those solutions. We've combined both into one tool because we see a lot of value in using them in conjunction. And we've brought some other great stuff around it as well, which you'll see in the next slide and in the demo. So before we jump into what process automation is, what do you wanna automate? I mean, the sort of circles there would indicate the type of things that you would want to do. But every day, SAP helps our customers with their mission critical processes from lead to cash, hire to retire, you name it. And that can be through just SAP applications or a combination of SAP and non-SAP applications. So while all of these are mission critical and important to your business, the other thing they've got in common is there's a lot of manual work. So lots of things when you're talking from system to system that requires cutting and pasting or rekeying things in. And anytime you've got this kind of manual repetitive work, it's not that fun for employees to do. Most of us don't like working on things like that. As well, it introduces room for errors. So we're hoping to show you today how automating some of these things in the processes you're already running can make your employees happier, reduce errors, and make your processes run faster and more smoothly. So when we look at process automation, this launched earlier in the year, um, built on a strong foundation of our expertise with workflow management and robotic process automation. So it is kind of everything you need for automation in one single tool. Before we even jump into the solution though, on the left-hand side there, you'll see Signavio and Qualtrics. Tools like this are really important to understand where are there opportunities to be more efficient? Where are things getting caught up in your current process? Or for customer sentiment, you know, what are people frustrated with currently? What needs to be improved? So you would use a solution like that to inform you on what you can improve. And we've actually got integration with Signavio, so it can make recommendations around what you might want to consider doing within process automation. So once we've said, okay, this stuff is maybe a little bit sticky and there's room for improvement, then we jump into the tool to making those improvements. So as the name might suggest, it starts with processes and a process builder. So we've got a full workflow builder where you can kind of signify the next steps. One question I get a lot, you know, when we talk to customers is, well, we've already got, you know, processes within ERP or within our HR solution. I want to, it's really important to kind of call out, this isn't replacing the processes in those applications. This can be maybe enriching them with other data or other information that you need, or even kind of the pre-processing, if you will. Um, so let's run through an example of raising a purchase requisition, and I'm actually going to demo it later within S4. So there's some pre-processing that needs to happen. You know, the information can come in a lot of different ways. In the demo, I'm going to show how we can collect the information we need for purchase requisition through a form, but it could also come in through an email. Um, and in that case, you might want to use a document extraction, or here we see embedded AI, to actually say, okay, this is, you know, the name of the solution, this is the name of the customer, to scrape all of that necessary information. Um, so again, we can collect information through a form or through document extraction. We also have bots, so you can mimic screen scraping. So for systems where maybe an API doesn't exist um, or it's a really manual task, you can use a bot to automate it. And that's all within process automation. The other thing really important when you do automations, though, is these business rules, because there's going to be different rules for different things. So if I take purchasing and kind of continue on with that example, 
you know, if I'm buying a headset for $30, probably my boss doesn't need to approve it. If I'm buying, you know, a $2,000 MacBook, he or she may want to have a look and, and approve that. And there might even be some approvals where it's an exception and it needs to go to the CIO or the IT manager. So process automation really gives you the ability to build in those business rules as well. Now, of course, we've got tools like Signavio to give you this process visibility, um, but right within process automation, we also give you visibility into the tasks that are running, where they're stuck, and where things are in the process. So if you've got some decisioning and maybe I have to approve something and then I hand it off to Allie, we can easily see, okay, shoot, you know, Allie hasn't approved it yet or where things are in the process right from within process automation. Um, and then we've got a unified task center as well. So you can see all of the things that are coming into your inbox. Um, all of this is done actually with thousands of pre-built, or thousands, sorry, that's ambitious, hundreds of pre-built automations, whether those are workflows or bots, to work with the SAP systems uh, that you're already using, as well as non-SAP systems. The other really cool thing about this solution is it is built with citizen developers in mind. So it's got all of the control and security and governance that you as a professional developer needs, but people like myself can go in and modify the process or amend things with a drag and drop interface. So it really is intended to support, you know, citizen developers or business users because they're the people that are closer to the process. So without further ado, Ali, I think I will jump in now and start the demo if that works. Oh, but I should say, of course, this is a, a session about free tier. So this is available for free in the BTP free tier. And not only is it available for free in free tier, um, you can use it for productive use. So that's something that's really cool as well. So if you're wanting to try this out with the processes you're already running, you're going to go to store.sap.com. And you can see I've already searched for BTP. So just search for the BTP in the search bar there. And I see business technology platform. I will click on that. You see all of the benefits here, um, more information about the free tier. And I'm gonna go ahead and say view pricing. So there's a list, if I click on free tier services of everything available, and you can trust me on this one, or you can check it out here, that process automation, oh, there we go, is available right here in the free tier. So you see that's available. It's one of 34 services that are available in free tier. Now, if I wanna get started right now with process automation, I simply click start now. And then really important here, you're not gonna sign up as your organization. You're gonna sign up as an individual user. We'll ask you for a little bit of information about yourself um, so you can go ahead and get started. And then you'll get a confirmation and you can go ahead and launch the service and you'll go into BTP cockpit and launch process automation. So that one's pretty tactical. We've got some great blogs on it that are gonna be included in the show notes with accompanying videos. So with that, I will jump directly to the application. So once you've gone into BTP Cockpit and launched process automation, this is what you're going to see. So you can create a process, create a form, create an automation or a bot, and you can also browse existing content. So let's go ahead and look at this process that I have already built. And you can tell it's a live demo because we've got a couple dots here. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go to the overview here, and this is for the purchase requisition. Okay, and we've got a time out, of course. There we go. Um, so this is actually the scenario that I just walked through when I talked about the capabilities. So any process is actually triggered with, with a purchase request. Um, or sorry, all the processes are started with a trigger. In this case, it's a purchase request form. So I can go ahead and open the editor. And I can see there the information that I've collected. So I've got the requisition name, the description, the material, how much. Um, and some of these can be free field texts. You can also do things like number values. So for quantity or cost, obviously, you don't want that to come back as letters. You want that to be numbers and a numeric value. And you can set things like expected delivery date. I could easily just drag and drop new fields here. Like maybe I want to um, you know, change this. So that's a text field I've added in. I might say, you know, what's your business rationale? So all everything within the form can be done just through this drag and drop editor. But I'm just going to go ahead and X out of that one. So we're not going to save those changes. So we'll delete that. Um, but essentially, the process has started, you know, with this form to trigger the request. And I'll show you what that looks like later. 
then it's really important to go to the responsibility determination. So this is understanding, and I'm going to open the editor so we can see what we've done here. But this is where I kind of set the business rules and the decisioning around who approves what. So when I open this up, you'll see that we've got different rules based on, um, you know, the different parameters. So you can easily add different parameters to understand who's going to, to basically make the decision. Um, and then here we've got the manager approval form. So again, this is a form that would be triggered to approve or deny for the manager. Um, so they would get this form where they can approve it or deny it. If they've approved the purchase requisition, this is actually triggering an action right within S4 HANA. So here you see the destination variable is S4 HANA, and we're going to be passing all of the required information that's collected from the form right into the S4 HANA system to open the purchase requisition. Um, if unfortunately your purchase is denied and the manager, your manager selects deny, then you would get the rejection notification. Now, in this case, you can see once the purchase requisition has been approved and the business validation form has, so me as the purchaser says, yes, I want to do this, then a mail is triggered once the purchase requisition is entered. You get an email from the S4 HANA system basically saying what you've ordered. But for rejection notification, the way it currently is happening is I just have the process ending, which isn't maybe necessarily the most elegant. So as the process owner, I might look at this and say, you know, I think it would be good if people knew that it was getting rejected. So again, it's very drag and drop. I could add another form, um, an approval, an automation. So this would be, you know, a, a bot or a screen scrape. Um, you can also do decision, workflows, et cetera. But in this case, I'm gonna simply add a mail. So you could just say decline. And you could put the person in here. So the proper email, for example, um, and add all those fields to trigger an automatic email if there was a decline as well. So you can see here how easy it is for people, you know, even business users like myself to go ahead and add new steps to the process. So this is an editable version of the process that I'm looking at, but let's go to the deployed one, discard all changes. Um, when I look at the deployed version, I can see what the form would look like here. So if I click on this form, I get the form link. So this is something that I could easily share with my employees. I'll just copy the link to the clip, clipboard, sorry, open a new tab. And I'm going to see what the form looks like. So this is the purchase request form, which would trigger the process that we just worked through. So I'm going to say it, the request is headset order. My order. And then you'll remember from the form that we saw it, this is a drop down. So I'm going to add the headset. I just need one. It's going to cost, let's say, 30 euro. And you know, I would really like to get this by next week. So I'm going to say October 3rd. Then there's other drop downs just around the purchasing organization. I'm going to enter some comments here if I wanted. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to also ask for a validation so that when this has been approved, I would like to get an email. So I'm going to go ahead and enter my email and hit submit. So the request form is submitted. Okay, so I've gone ahead and submitted that. And then when I go to my inbox, so this is my Fury inbox, I can go ahead and refresh. And loading, okay, good, it worked. <laughs> Gotta love live demos. And you can see here, this is the request that I just put in for my headset for 30 euros. So this has shown up within my inbox. Um, in this case, I was the manager and the requester. So there's my email. I'm gonna go ahead and approve it. And it's cleared out of my inbox. And within a moment, I will actually get an email that I can open up. So this will be sent to my email. So you can see here how we've, you know, initiated the process, closed the loop, and then once it's actually accepted and the purchase requisition is opened in the S4 HANA system, I'll get the approval. So that's a really whirlwind tour of the type of automations that we can create within SAP process automation. Um, I hope that gave you a good overview. Um, so that's just one scenario that we've kind of highlighted is around purchase requisitions. So there's lots of different places that process automation can help though. I mean, data collection is one area where things are very manual and high volume. Any sort of high volume transaction is another area that you would wanna look at automations. 
um, for approvals and that type of workflow that you just saw. That's another one. Um, simplifying new processes. This is when it was actually interesting when I was at Sapphire. We talked to a lot of customers that had implemented workflow management around things like building access and rules. Um, so during COVID, unfortunately, help orders were changing. And overnight, you could say people aren't allowed in the office or they are, but at a restricted capacity. So changing rules on the fly with a system like this it can be really, really, um, really helpful for organizations. And we saw that a lot during COVID. Um, and then, of course, having the process visibility to where things are within one solution is super helpful. So that is a super quick tour of process automation. Um, like I mentioned, there'll be more details in the show notes on where you can find information in the free tier. Um, or if you want to watch more videos about using the bots, which I didn't have a chance to demo or process visibility, um, there's a QR code there where you can get more information about process automation. So I wanted to thank you very much for taking the time to learn more about the service that you can access now through free tier and of course use in production. Oh, actually, if it's okay, there's one thing I forgot to demo, demo in my whirlwind tour, but I would really like to show you quickly. Um, it would be the store as well. So the other thing that I would love to note is with process automation, of course, you can get started in the free tier. Um, I showed you a process that I had built, but we don't expect you to necessarily start from scratch because we're SAP and we understand our processes. We've got a ton of pre-built content. So if I wanted to search for S4 here within the store, I can easily go ahead and do that. And you can see all sorts of pre-built content that's built for the S4 application, for Reba and for other applications. So we've got lots of tools built by SAP and our partners to get you started quickly. You can go on into production right away with the free tier. Um, and again, that was just accessed uh, through the store within the process automation tools. So once you check it out on free tier, you can have a look at it yourself. And sorry for that <laughs> interlude back to the demo. Um, but with that, Ali, I would love to pass it back to you. Great. Thank you, Angela, for showing us how easy it is for businesses to benefit from SAP process automation. Uh, if you'd like to try SAP automation, uh, like Angela said, uh, today you can visit sap.com backslash BTP or scan the QR code here behind us uh, and click on try for free. Uh, like Angela mentioned again, uh, with this $0 pay as you go model, you can start right now in a production environment and never lose any of your work. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop those in the comments below, and we'll be happy, happy to answer those. And with that, uh, thank you and have a great day. Thanks, everyone.